you want to know the correct way to lay a patio, as well as the tools and materials that you'll need. Do you fancy making something for loved ones, but need some inspiration to get started? Do you want to find out what happens when kids invent stuff? On the latest episode, we're designing and making for the family. Stick with Evolution Power Tools TV to find out more. You're right, everyone. My name's Joel from Average Joel's Joinery, and I'm excited to introduce to you a brand new episode of Evolution Power Tools TV, a monthly show dedicated to bringing you inspirational stories, DIY guides, and tips and tricks to make you a better maker. We're continuing to post a new episode of Evolution Power Tools TV every month, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn that bell notification on to guarantee you never miss an episode. Okay, let's see what we have coming up. First up, Chris Smith gives us a glimpse into the kind of projects a builder works on as he creates a patio for a customer using an Evolution Power Tools disc cutter. Make sure you click through to see Chris's step-by-step -step guide on building a patio. Next, we visit Ruth from Kids Invent Stuff and she tells us about her amazing YouTube channel where, along with her co-host Sean, she creates the wild and wacky inventions that their young fans send in. After that, Vicky will be speaking with our special guest, Mitch Peacock, and he tells us about his incredible creations. Mitch is an absolute fountain of knowledge on making, so make sure you stick around and hear all about it. Then it's time to get technical with Evolution Power Tools' very own Lee Price, who'll talk us through the assembly of the Evolution Rage 5S table saw. Finally, it's competition time. Megan will be back to take a look at your recent creations and announce whose project has won some great prizes. We'll also announce the winner of our big competition and introduce next month's prizes. Okay, now you've seen what's coming up in the show, let's get started. Here's Chris Smith to show us how he goes about building a patio. Hiya, I'm Chris the Builder. I specialise in doing domestic house extensions. And today we're here in Wigan, having a look at this job we're just coming to the end of. Just the two of us have built this. It took about six months, but really proud of it. Bifolds on, lights everywhere, 15 degree pitch roof, which was really hard to do, but it's within the building regs. We've had to put some steel columns in to catch the load coming out this way. Today, we're gonna to be laying this patio. There's about 50 square meters of Indian stone difference being is Evo have been in contact with me a few weeks ago and they've asked me to trial out this brand new water-fed disc cutter so today we're going to try it out see how it is right obviously we've just done this small section so far we're going to carry on this afternoon and finish the rest of it. Got a good 40 metres to go. Well impressed with the saw and we'll see how it goes in the next couple of days. Okay, one more step to fit and we're going to let Mikey, my apprentice, have a go at cutting this last step. He's never used the saw before, so we'll see how it goes. Right, we're going to fit this bottom step. That's the actual base, so we're going to prime all this up. So you put this on, because the base is so porous, if you don't, it sucks all the moisture out straight away. And then we're going to use a five part sharp sand, one part cement mixture on this. So this is five to one. A little bit of waterproofer in it. There's a little bit of feb in it. So now I'm going to slurry the back of the stone. Some people have it this way up. And some people like myself have it the other way. It doesn't affect the stone whatsoever. It's a natural piece of stone. 
give it a little shimmy. I tend to put it on with a small level first. This is about a one kilo rubber mallet. Use the corner of the mallet. There you go, done. Beautiful. Okay, patio finished. All down, rinsed off, ready for pointing. The more eagle-eyed ones of you, hopefully you will notice this about your patio or anyone else's patio. No crosses, no crosses on a random stone patio. You can have a tea, you can't have a cross. If you have a look anywhere on this patio, there are no crosses. Bad job. Lay them dry, get a good idea of where everything's gonna go, but don't have crosses. It just looks bad, or long, long straight lines. So this is what I mean by a cross. There's loads of crosses in this. This was down before I started, we've just added to it. If you can have a look at these, just doesn't look right when there's crosses in it. Stagger them, boys, stagger them. So here we are, all done. Parting shot of the extension. Like I said, me and Mikey have done it from start to finish. We've done everything ourselves. I was driving the JCB, digging it out. Mikey was taking the dump around the front. 208 tonnes of soil came out of the entire job. We did the foundations, mass filled them, did the brickwork, retaining walls, and even installed the electrics because I'm a qualified City and Gills electrical installer. And then just finished off this week with this Gotta say, I know I've done it, but it's a fantastic looking patio um, with the help of uh, Evolution Power Tools. And more importantly, the water suppressed saw, which is a good piece of kit. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find Chris's guide to building a patio, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks for that, Chris. It was great to see how a professional builder goes about laying a patio. If you want to see the full guide, the link's in the description down below. Later in the show, I'll be revealing who has won last month's competition, and I'll be telling you how you could win a two-night boutique hotel stay for two, or some Apple AirTags. Keep watching Evolution Power Tools TV for your chance to win. Before we move on to our next feature, now's a good time to take a look at what you guys have been doing this month. Ross has been using his Evolution miter saw to cut skirting board for his refurb project. Dave has been using his Evolution R165 CCS cordless circular saw to cut some 10mm mild steel. He's very happy with the way it cuts. Susie has upcycled this pair of Chester drawers with the help of her Evolution power tools. Jay has been using his Evolution belt sander to finish off his carved bedside table project. It looks great, Jay. Make sure that you tag us in all of your project videos. We love seeing what you guys are getting up to. Now, it's time to see how children's ideas are being brought to life. Kids Invent Stuff is an incredible YouTube channel where ideas are sent in, built and tested. Evolution Power Tools TV was lucky enough to be invited along to their workshop. Hey, my name's Ruth, one of the co-founders of Kids Invent Stuff, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we do. Kids Invent Stuff? Well, Kids Invent Stuff is a YouTube channel that me and my friend Sean set up where we bring to life kids' invention ideas. 
Every month we set a different invention challenge and four to 11 year olds send in invention ideas as pictures or videos and Sean and I choose to bring one to life. We show how we build it, we show the things that go wrong and then we test it on camera. And all of this we put over on our YouTube channel. Anyway, who wants to come see the workshop? So this is one of our workshops and where Sean and I bring to life the kids' invention ideas that get sent to us. We've built some amazing invention ideas, from giant robot mice that poop out cat food, to trains that will deliver you a cup of tea, or even confetti firing shoes. And all of these are inventions that have been sent to us as drawings or videos by primary age children. So once we've chosen which invention we're going to make, we need to work out how we're going to build it. And that involves Sean and I sitting down and making a plan. Sometimes it's easy to split the job. So when we built our giant gravity cake racer, we needed a wooden frame, which I built, and we needed a lot of cake, which Sean did. Sean baked 140 kilograms of vegan cake in a microwave and then we combine the two bits together to create Grace's gravity racer. Now in some situations we have to think we're going to take something that already exists and take it to pieces. We built Connor's crazy car invention that involved grinding a hole in the top of a real car and then other times we're taking apart things that exist to put inside the invention. So when we built our robot crocodile lawnmower, we took an existing lawnmower and took pieces off it to make it into the crocodile lawnmower. Now, depending what process we're doing, then we need different tools. So we might be welding, we might be chopping things using our Evolution TCT chop saw, we might be programming some stuff on an Arduino, and all of these things help bring the inventions to life. So the reason that we started Kids Invent Stuff was because two pieces of research came out. The first was around careers and the fact that young people form their ideas of what they can and can't do in a career way earlier than people ever thought. So around the ages of six and seven. And that was particularly important for girls. And so we wanted to do something that showed that age group how exciting engineering and making was. The second was around the fact that more people were watching YouTube than mainstream TV. And so Sean and I decided to combine those two things to create Kids Invent Stuff. So what's next for Kids Invent Stuff? Well, we are so close to 100 kids inventions being brought to life on the channel, and so we would love to reach that. But also, Sean and I just want to keep inspiring the next generation of inventors and makers. Personally, I now have a job that I never dreamed of as a child. I never saw myself as an inventor or maker because I didn't see people like me doing that job. And so I'm really passionate about this because I don't want any other young person to miss out on a job that they would love just because they can't see themselves doing it. Thank you so much for visiting and hearing all about Kids Invent Stuff. If you want to see any more of our videos, then head over to our channel. And if you know of any kids whose invention should be brought to life, then send them to our website. Both of these things are in the description of this video. We've also filmed a slightly more in-depth chat about some of our projects, which you can find on the Evolution website, which is also in the description of this video. Thank you so much for visiting, and I'll see you soon. Bye! Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video about kids invent stuff, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode.
Huge thanks to Ruth for having us over to tell us all about Kids Invent Stuff. If you want to see more of the things that they've created, click the link in the description. Make sure you check out the Kids Invent Stuff YouTube channel as well. All of their videos are fascinating and really inspirational. Before we meet this month's guest, you guys have been sending us your DIY tips. Let's take a look. Maximise your clamp collection. Did you know if you've got bar clamps, you can put them together like this to make one big giant clamp? You're welcome. Measure, measure and measure again. I've lost count of the times that I've cut something only to realise that I've measured it inaccurately. And there is nothing worse than driving over an hour to realise something doesn't fit in your car. An accurate tape measure is worth its weight in gold. Make sure you've got a breaker in your tool bag. You won't believe how often I've used a breaker on this job. Big job, small job, you're gonna want a breaker, make sure you've got one. Make sure that you're always wearing a mask or you're in a well-ventilated room, especially when you're doing anything that might be really dusty. And this is so important, especially if you've got asthma. Never be afraid of starting a project. Break it down into small steps and you'll be amazed at what you can do just by starting. Thanks to everyone for giving us your DIY tips. If you'd like to get involved, all you have to do is make a video of yourself telling us your top five DIY tips. Just tag us in the video and you could be featured on our next episode. If your video is featured, we'll send you a brand new Evolution Mitre saw, so make sure you get involved. Right, it's time to meet our guest maker. He provides woodworking tuition and advice to an army of dedicated followers. He also creates bespoke pieces for grateful customers, from chairs and tables to planters and cabinets. He's made YouTube videos on almost everything to do with making, so he's got a lot to teach us. It's woodworking guru, Mitch Peacock. Thank you for joining us, Mitch. Now, you have a very impressive catalogue of videos. I don't know any other YouTubers that have as many. How did you get into woodworking in the first place? Well, I guess woodworking was always going to happen because my father and my grandfather were always woodworking on weekends. So as a youngster, I, I saw all that happening. I looked back and woodworking was something I really loved. So I, I took that up and taught myself how to do fine furniture. Have you had any formal training at all? Because I was really impressed with your skills, the, the attention to detail. The only tuition I ever took was for actually doing carving, wood carving. Uh, I took that for about six weeks and I, I just decided, no, tuition's not good for me, I need to learn by myself. Do you find YouTube videos, or did you find YouTube videos at the time, a staple to that, or books? I didn't know anything about YouTube videos at the time, and it was only through a friend of mine, and I was explaining what I was doing with my woodworking to him, and he said, you ought to look into YouTube, and that's really how it all came to start. So what kind of things do you like to teach people on YouTube? On YouTube, mainly my tutorials for woodworking joints so that they can go on to build other things from there. And then I'll also show projects where they can download plans and follow along with me or make slight alterations, make their own custom design around what I've built. So ideas have to come from somewhere. So what I'd like to know is where do you get your inspiration from? Most of my videos are tutorials and so it's from what I've learnt myself. Occasionally I see things on YouTube or social media which inspire me to make something maybe similar but using my own influences. Has there been a particular project that's completely surprised you on how well it's done? There have been a few but the, the one that really did surprise me was a tutorial video I did on making a knuckle joint. A knuckle joint is often used in tables, specifically a Pembroke table, to support a flap to extend the table. And you wouldn't think that would be particularly popular, but it's the most popular video that I've ever had. Well, I watched that and I was really impressed that it made me want to make one immediately. And I believe you've brought that with us today. Indeed I have. Let's have a look. Can you give us a, a quick brief on how you, you made it? It's really a case of making a couple of finger jointed ends to boards. So you're cutting away a section here and a section there on the one board and on the other board you're taking the opposite sections away. So the fingers go together like so, but then you're carving a um, semicircle on the back side of each of those so that they slot together 
It looks Sorry. almost like a single piece of wood that's been carved a little bit, but then you've got that movement in there. What wood did you make this out of? That's made out of Iroko, which is a hardwood usually used for outdoor projects and easily accessible in timber merchants. Do you find yourself quite conscious of people following your, your videos and using up endangered species of wood and stripping the rainforest? Uh, that obviously is a big concern, especially with climate change and things like that at the moment. I actually have a, a series on different woods that uh, woodworkers can use. And if any of those species are actually endangered on the UN Red List or CITES list, then I make note of that and ask people to be responsible about what they use. But also I use a lot of reclaimed wood in my projects, so showing that you can use old furniture, break it down and make something new from it. So what project are you most proud of? Now that's like asking a parent which child they're most proud of. <laughs> it's extremely difficult. If thinking of what, I've, what challenge I've overcome to create a project, then possibly that would be uh, an extension I made in a, in a church to the, some staging they had. And it had to be structurally sound because half the congregation might be standing on it. It had to look like a piece of furniture, so it needed a bit of fine furniture work on it. And it was a complicated shape. That had a lot of challenges and I was very proud of how I managed to, to cope with that. What's been the most useful project you've done recently? Well, I make hand tools as well. And at the beginning of COVID, I had problems with my hands because of arthritis and I needed a scrub plane that would be comfortable in the hands. So I built from wood a scrub plane and it's been very valuable ever since. I use it on virtually every project. Which I believe is this one that you're talking about. That's right. That feels, that feels very solid. Again, that's made from hardwoods and I forged the iron from an old tire iron. And you see it's grooved in the front to take your fingers to make it nice and comfortable. At least it's, it's made for my fingers. And what is the future of your YouTube channel and your, your projects? I really need to look at my channel and, and, and take it in a different direction now, I think. I've probably taught uh, everything that needs to be taught in all the back videos that I've got. But to keep them current, I need to publish something every so often. The other things that are tying me up are I've, I've started writing a book on woodworking joints and I'm doing a lot of magazine articles as well. But we'll see, there'll be something different on YouTube fairly soon. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Mitch. Thank you, Vicky, it's been a pleasure. And if you want to see more, he's got loads of tutorials on YouTube or go and check out his website. And if you'd like to see our full interview, you can click through to the Evolution Power Tools website. And thanks to you at home for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Now, the Rage 5S table saw is one of Evolution Power Tools' most popular products due to its portability, reliability and multi-material cutting technology. But not everyone knows how to get the best out of this table saw right out of the box. Evolution's product design guru, Lee Price, is on hand to help you assemble and optimise the Rage 5S. Thanks a lot, Joe. Hi everybody, it's Lee here from the Evolution Power Tools design team based in Sheffield. Today, we're gonna take a look at this here classic table saw. It's the 255 millimeter multi-material cutting Rage 5S. The workbench we usually have here is out of the way for this one. We got big tools here and we need all the floor space we can get. Let me tell you something though, we're aware of this Facebook group that's out for the Rage 5S, some of the comments you guys have been making, you can be sure Evolution have listened and seen this. So well, I can't disclose any specifics or dates, you can be sure Evolution have heard you. I'll have to say watch this space for the updates on new Evolution products you may be interested in. If you like these technical videos, if it's of interest to you, please do hit that bell notification. It'll really help us out and we'll continue bringing you the power tool technical content you love. With that being said, let's dive in. Okay, so the main purpose for this month's technical video is to provide all you with an in-depth guide on how to assemble the Rage 5S. So if that's something you're going to find useful, please do click through on the links below to enjoy the support video on how to do this. We take you off-site to the Evolution website to do it. You'll see me open up, unbox this video, take all the parts out and assemble it using the supplied instructions. I'll take you through the whole process as I go through my own assembly. The aim is that you should be able to follow along with your process and build your Rage 5S without having to keep pressing the pause button as much as you may have to do with some other assembly videos that may be produced there. I'll run through all the parts supplied with the machine and also which tools are recommended to have in place when you're undertaking the assembly. 
Once assembled, I'll run through some of the features of the RAGE 5S, which sets this contractor table saw design apart against other standard table saw designs, including the left and right table extensions, the fold-up design, which is great for portability, and transporting the saw around your workshop or worksite. Once the setup is complete and you know what new features you can enjoy, we'll dive into the calibration of the saw. How to set the blade square at 90 and 45 and making sure the blade fences are level and square with the tabletop. Whatever adjustments may be needed, we'll make sure that you're covered so your saw is set up and ready for accurate cutting every time. So, if you need any assistance, be it assembling or setting up your table saw, then click through on the link below now for the full guide. Of course, if you require any further information, some support, or perhaps you just want to drop in, ask us a question on either tool, you're more than welcome to stop by by leaving a comment. We'll definitely get back to you. Well, that's me done for the day, so have yourselves a good one. I'll see you on the next one. It's back to Joe in the studio. Make sure you click the links in the description to go through to the Evolution Power Tools website. You'll not only find a more in-depth video from Lee, but you'll also find much more great content from everyone featured in this episode. Thanks Lee, I hope that that guide to the Rage 5S has inspired you guys to want to see more. If it has, click the link in the description for the more in-depth video. Right, it's competition time now, so it's over to Megan to find out what you can win. Thanks Joe. Hi guys, I'm back to announce the winner of last episode's competitions and tell you how you can win some fantastic prizes. I'm Megan. Head of Customer Service for Evolution Power Tools. Myself and my team work hard to help our customers with their Evolution products and today I have the additional job of letting you know which of you has won our pitch competition and will be enjoying their prize of an Amazon Echo Show. I'll also be announcing the winner of last episode's big competition that had a grand prize of an Apple Watch SE GPS. Make sure you stick around as later on I'll be telling you how you can win some Apple AirTags for taking part in our pitch competition. We'll also be giving away a two-night boutique hotel stay for two, and all you have to do is answer a very simple question. Before we get on to the competitions, I just want to tell you a bit about some of the conversations I and my team have had with our customers this month. Phil called our customer service team as the tool he ordered from us turned out to be too small for his intended DIY job. We were able to identify the problem and recommend a larger unit that was much more suited to his particular DIY project, Phil was really pleased with the service he received from the team. Catherine got in touch via email to let us know that her R210 CMS would no longer power up. Her machine was still under warranty and so we collected it and sent her a replacement unit. Catherine was really happy with the service she received and the quick turnaround. She told us that she'll be recommending Evolution Power Tools in the future. Alan contacted us via the live chat functionality on our website as he was having trouble changing the blade on his Rage table saw. We offered Alan a fixed price repair as his unit was out of warranty and we kept in touch with him as repairs were being made to his table saw and he was delighted with the service he received. If you need any information about Evolution Power Tools products or any support with your purchases, our customer service and technical support team are on hand 8am to 5pm Monday to Friday. Right, let's get on to the competitions. You guys have been sending in pictures of the things that you've been making and they all look great. Let's have a look at some of them. First up, Russell has created this brilliant DIY table project. Really well done, Russell. It looks fantastic. Next, Tracy has created this bench from her son's old bed. What an amazing project and a great picture. Peter has made this alpine planter out of pallet wood earlier on this summer. It looks brilliant, Peter. Check out this picture from Steve. He has used old railway sleepers to create this handy garden bench. Good work, Steve. Finally, Sylvia has added this lovely looking timber store to the side of her shed. What a great project and really well executed. All of your pictures have been great, but only one of you has won the competition in the Amazon Echo Show. I'm very pleased to announce that our winner is Tracy for her picture of her bench project. Very good work, Tracy. Your prize is on its way to you now. Next month, for our August 2022 episode, we will be giving away Apple AirTags as our picture competition prize. AirTag is an easy way to keep track of your stuff. Attach one to your keys, slip another one in your backpack, and just like that, they're on your radar in the Find My app. If you want to take part in our picture competition, all you have to do is post a picture on Instagram of something that you have made recently. 
Make sure you use the hashtag, hashtag EvolutionTVWin, or your picture may be missed. You can even just tag us in a picture that you've uploaded already. It doesn't have to be new. Just add the hashtag to your existing picture to enter. In our last episode, we gave away the Indulgent Spa Day collection. Congratulations again to Barry, whose picture of his custom pergola saw him bagging this fantastic prize. Barry has sent us a video of him with his prize. Just want to say a quick thanks to the folks over at Evolution Power Tools. We received our prize for winning last month's picture competition and we're really looking forward to having a day at Spa. Thanks again, Barry. Remember, if you're watching this after August 2022, the competition will be closed. You can, however, still take part. Click the competition link in the description to see the latest prizes. Right, in our last episode, you took part in our big competition to win an Apple Watch SE GPS. All you had to do was answer A, B or C to this simple question. What project did Kaylee Higgs complete in her video? Was it A, a toy box, B, a bench, or C, a trellis? The answer is, of course, A, a toy box. Well done to Simon for getting the correct answer. Your Apple Watch SE GPS is on its way to you. If you want to be our big winner, just like Simon, stick around for this month's grand prize competition. For next month's big competition, you could be in with a chance of winning a two-night boutique hotel stay for two, worth 299. All you have to do is answer the following very simple question. Earlier in the episode, we met Ruth Amos, co-host of Kids Invent Stuff, and she told you about their animal-based lawnmower invention. The question is, what animal did Kids Invent Stuff turn into a lawnmower? Is it A, a giraffe, B, a crocodile, or C, a hedgehog? Click the competition link in the description to answer the question. We will then choose a winner at random from all of the correct entries and announce who has won on the next episode. Remember that if you're watching this after August 2022, the competition will no longer be active, but you can still click the link to see the latest question and prize. Before I go, I have even more Evolution products to give away. To win yourself an Evolution Mitosaur, click through to the competitions page to find out what you need to do. Okay, that's it for competitions this month. Make sure you click the link in the description to take part in the competitions and win some great prizes. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Megan. Right, that's it for today's episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you never miss an upcoming episode. Please comment below if you have any questions, suggestions or ideas for content and make sure you come back next time for more great inspirational stories. Thanks a lot for staying with me and I hope that you've enjoyed the show. That's it from me, I'll catch you on the next one.